So I tell nice. welcome to this video lesson on section three of chapter 34 in Lingua Latina per se illustrata. <clears throat> All right. He versus magnum risum moment. These verses um, move, or in other words, stir great laughter. We're talking about the poem where Catullus says to his friend, you'll dine well as long as you bring all the dinner and entertainment and everything because my money pouch is full of spider webs. So apparently the guests like this funny poem. Tum vero Cornelius, but then Cornelius, bene quidem minquit, says, indeed, it's well. Et jucose scripts it Catullus, and Catullus wrote, um, Humorously, let's say, Nec tamen versus eius camparande sunt, nor nevertheless are his verses to be compared, cum epigrammatis sale plenis, quae martiales in inimico scripsit, with the epigrams full of salt. Now, the full of salt is um, it's a metaphor for full of wit um, or good humor. So this is a normal uh, thing to say in Latin, salt meaning wit or humor. Okay, uh, nor are his verses, Catullus' verses, to be compared, that's a gerundive, with the epigrams full of salt, which Marshall wrote against his enemies. Now, if you don't know what epigrams are, epigrams are short and often witty poems. Originally, some of the first epigrams the Greeks wrote were memorial poems that you would see like on graves, um, memorial, memorials and things like that. But um, by the time you get to um, the Hellenistic period, um, you know, Alexander the Great and thereafter, and then uh, if you get to the Romans, epigrams uh, often have to do with witty, humorous things, maybe attacking your enemies and stuff like that. All right, so Marshall, one of the harshest of the Roman poets. He can be funny for sure, but he... he he was pretty mean. All right. Simper libros martiales mecum in seno ferro. I always carry the books of Marshall with me in my, um, what do we want to call this? In my toga fold. <laughs> All right. So sinus actually means, of course, this is where we get sinuses from in English, and I believe a sine uh, curve as well. So, um, Sinus, in its most basic sense, is curve or fold, something like that. Bend, you could also say. Um, but often when we're talking about clothing, this is a sort of little pouch in a fold of the clothes. And you can see it illustrated here on the margin. And we have the scroll sticking out of the sinus, the fold of the toga here. And that's what's meant here in this place. Uh, Ancients did not really have pockets in their clothes, so you could have something like this, or you could carry a bag with you to carry things in. No pockets. Ab omnibus rocatus, um, asked by them all, ut epigrammata recitet, that he should read out loud the epigrams, Cornelius libellum awovit, Cornelius unrolled the little book. And again, this would be a scroll. Almost all Roman books were scrolls. They did have some codices, or the singular is codex, um, and this would be a book like we have. It was a bit of new invention around the second century AD where we are in our story here, so it would have been really rare. In Cipiet, in quit a versibus quos poeta de suis libelli scripsit. Um, he says, I shall begin from the verses which the poet wrote about his little books. Laudat amat cantat nostros me aroma libellos. My Rome, that's the subject, so we got poetic word order, loves, all right, praises, loves, sings our little books. Me quesinus omnes, me manus omnes habet. Every hand, manus omnis, all the, all the pockets, all the, you know, toga pockets, toga folds, have me. Uh, if I do this, it's kind of, so the word order here, this is our first subject, sinus omnes, and the second subject is manus omnis, the first direct object is the first me, and the second is the second me, and habet is the verb. Let me see if I can get it closer to the, 
uh, closer to the Latin word order. And me, all the toga pockets hold. Me, every hand holds. Okay, so hopefully you can see how that works structurally there. We got some nice parallelism with the direct object, direct object, and then with the subjects following and the verb at the end. Very nicely structured. Um, and we got repetition of omnis in different cases. That's called polyptoton. The may at the beginning of each phrase is called anaphora. Um, rhetorically, it's a very fancy construction. Ecce rubet quidam palet stupet oscitat odit. <laughs> Look, a certain person blushes, turns red. Ooh, because he's embarrassed by the poems of Marshall. He turns pale, perhaps in fear. He can't believe he said something so awful. Stupet, he stands there stupefied with his mouth gaping open. Oscitat, he... Um... I don't know, stupid. Oskatot is, again, referring to the mouth standing open. Stupet could also be maybe like his eyes look freaked out because he's amazed. But basically, stupet and oskatot both have to do with the person freaking out, right? All of these verbs here are giving reactions to the people that are reading Marshall's poems. And again, this is Marshall writing about other people's reaction to his poetry. So a certain guy blushes, someone who pales, turns pale. Somebody is just surprised, is freaking out. Somebody has got their mouth hanging open. Oskitat, odit, a certain person hates it, right? Extreme reactions to this poetry. Hok wolo, I want this. So Marshall's like, yep, yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted people to freak out. That's why I wrote these crazy poems. Nunc nobis carmena nostra placent. Now our poems please us. Okay, so... He's happy that his poems are making people freak out all over the place. Because <laughs> that gets him more readership, more fame, notoriety. Post hoc principium Cornelius olicult apigrammata martialis recitat. After this beginning, Cornelius reads out loud some epigrams of Marshall. In is, in these, haec quae scripta sunt in alios poetas, these which uh, have been written against other poets. Now, you'll notice, I think I've done this once before in this story, so in often has the meaning of against in, in certain contexts. So this, these are some attack lines, so lines of, what do we call it? He's sort of roasting his enemies here, tearing them apart. Cur non mito meos tibi pontelian elebelos. Why do I not send? My little books, and often books of poetry are called libelli, um, the diminutive of liber. Why do I not send my little books to you, Pontilianus? Ne mihi tu mitas Pontiliane tuos, lest you send, or so that you not send yours, meaning your little books, ellipsis, we didn't say the little books, but it's understood so that you not send your little books to me, Pontilianus. Now, let that process. Why don't I send my little books to you, Pontilianus? So you don't send your little books to me, Pontilianus. So the point of this is, Pontilianus, who uh, thinks he's a great poet, is actually awful. And so Marshall's not going to send him a book of his poems as a kind of friendly Thing, because he doesn't want to get any of that guy's awful poetry back. All right. Where siculos in me narrator scribere kina? Non scribit, cuius carmena nebo legit. Um, Senna is told to be writing little verses against me. We might say is said to be writing verses against me, right? Non scribit, he's not writing. Cuius Carmina Nemo Leget, whose poems nobody reads. <laughs> okay, so again, Senna is apparently a poetic uh, rival here, he, who is said to be writing verses against Marshall, right? Um, so criti ver verses of criticism toward Marshall. But Marshall's like, Shh, whatever, he's not writing. Nobody reads his poems anyhow, so you might as well consider him not to write. No good to, to write poetic criticism if nobody's going to even read you. Obviously not worth its salt. 
Nil recitas et vis mamerque poeta videri. You read nothing out loud. So rec I should say something about Roman custom here. A recitatio, a reading session, was a common um, sort of social event in ancient Rome. So this could be done at somebody's house, maybe in a dinner party, like we see the guests reading out loud here at this dinner party. Or it could be a little more public. You could um, maybe give a recitatio in public in the forum somewhere, like on the steps of the temple or perhaps in the theater when there wasn't a performance going on. All right, so you are reading nothing out loud. You are giving no recitationes, right? And you want Mamericus, Weiss, you want Mamericus to seem to be a poet. Okay, so if you're a proper poet, Marshall is implying, you ought to be giving recitationes, these public readings, or at least readings at dinner parties, right? Quid quid weis, whatever you want, esto, let it be, or that is to say, whatever you want, sure, so be it. Dum moro nil recites, so long as you read out loud nothing. Okay, what's the point of that? I think he means the guy is so awful. So be whatever you want. Just don't read anything out loud because I don't want to hear it, right? You're not reading anything out loud currently. You're not giving these recitationes, but you want to be a poet. Well, be whatever you want. Just don't, please don't read anything out loud because you're so awful. Ec alia epigrammata martialis. Look, other epigrams of Marshall. Quae Cornelius convivis attintis atque delicatis recitat. Which Cornelius reads out loud to the guests uh, attentive and delighted. Non amo te sabidi nec possum dicere quare. I do not love you, Sabidius, and I'm not able to say why. Hoc tantum possum dicere. This alone am I able to say. Non amo te. I do not love you. Nil me he das vivus. Don't you, while alive, or well, let's, let's do it this way. You, um, while alive, give me nothing. Dices post fata daturum. You say that you will give. Daturum is a future um, future participle here. Notice the you are. After your fates. That is to say, you say that you will give me something in your will, maybe, in the inheritance after you die, right? So this is a bit of euphemism here. You say you will give after your fates. Si non es stultus, scis maro quid cupiam. If you're not stupid, you know, Maro, what I am desire. Es en hil dikis quid quid petis improbex kena. Um, let's see. Si nil kena petis, nil tibi kena nego. Um, so you say it's nothing what you are seeking. You say whatever you are seeking is nothing, wicked sinna. If it's nothing, you're seeking sinna. I deny you nothing, sinna. <laughs> okay. Um, so obviously, I guess this sinna guy who is, uh, might be the same uh, rival poet as we mentioned up above um, is asking for a favor and he says, oh, it's nothing, right? And Catullus turns around and says, if you are seeking nothing, Senna, then I deny you nothing. All right. So I'll give you the nothing that you, you want. Uh, let's see. Nescio tam mortis quid scribas Fausti puellis? I don't know, Faustus, what you are writing to so many girls. Hulkskio. This I do know. Quod scribit nulla puella tibi. That no girl writes to you. <laughs> so apparently Faustus, I don't know if this is a poet. He might be. Um, he might be writing poetry to try to impress girls. Um, 
But whatever he's writing, I don't know what it is, says Catullus, but he does know no girl is writing back to Faustus. Secunter epigrammata quibus deridentur feminae, there follow epigrams in which women are mocked. Okay, so here we go. Again, patriarchal culture for ancient Rome. Um, so still there are aspects of our society today where women don't have sort of a fair share and they get mistreated. So these poems are going to be um, definitely quite rude and attacking women in general. So sexist, we could say. There follow epigrams in which women are mocked. Praecipue annus ut lycania et paula, especially old women, uh, such as Lycania and Paula. Now, this is not Paula in our story here, but another Paula that um, Marshall is writing about. Thais habet nigros nivios Lycania dentes. Thais has black teeth, Lycania white. Now, obviously, if somebody has black teeth, the teeth are not doing so well, right? Snowy white teeth, right? Nix niwis is snow, so this means snowy white teeth. Um, why are they so white? Quae ratio est? What's the reason? Emptos haec habit illa suos. This one, meaning Lacania, has bought teeth. Okay, emptos meaning emptos dentes. Purchased teeth. Fake teeth. Illa suos. That one, Thais, her own meaning her own teeth. So the black teeth Thias has, because they're her own. The snowy white ones, because they're bought fake teeth. Okay, roasting Lycania for having uh, false teeth and Thias for not taking care of hers and having black ones. Okay, Nubre vis Prisco, you want to marry Priscus? Non miror, Paula, sabisti. I'm not surprised, Paula, you have sense. Ducarete non vult Priscus? Priscus does not want to marry you? Et ille sapit. And he has wisdom. Or he too has wisdom. Okay, so he's mocking this Paola woman here. Again, this is not our Paola in our story, but another Paola that the poet Marshall knew. Uh, he says, yeah, you have sense, sapisti. Um, by the way, this is from the same root as sapiens, as in homo sapiens, a wise human being. Um... So you have sense, sapisti, but he has sense too if he doesn't want to marry you. Poor Paula. Nubere Paula cupit novis. Paula desires to marry us. Ego ducere Paula nolo. I don't want to marry Paula. Anus est. She's an old lady. Wellim si magis eset anus. I would want if she were more of an old lady. Let that one process. You might need to know something about Roman society in this time. Uh, among the upper classes of Roman society at this time, there were a lot of people that, uh, for one reason or another, didn't decide to have kids uh, or even to get married at times. And so then they don't have any heirs directly, you know, in their immediate family. So in their wills, they would often leave money to various people. Sometimes people would try to marry these old people, old men, old women. And so I would want to marry Paula if she were more of an old lady, meaning about to kick the bucket, because I might get to inherit all of her fortune. Ceteris redintibus, with the others, laughing. Quid day to sink with Paula? Paula, the character in our story, says, what are you laughing at? Num haec in me, uxorem formosum atque puella, scripta esse putatis. Surely you do not think that these things, these poems, um, were written against me, in me, a beautiful woman and, or beautiful wife, rather, and girl. Now, remember that puer and puella can be used to refer to young people in general, not necessarily girl in the sense of like, um, you know, it's school age, but maybe 20s or so on. So surely you don't think these are written against me, a beautiful wife and a girl, a young woman. And Cornelia says, Miname, Paula. No, no, no. In the least, Paula. Nexgilecit in te, nor, of course, against you. 
said in basam scripto mese hoc, but against basas has this been written. Dicis formosam diciste basa puelam, istud quae non es dicere basa solet. You say, basa, you are pretty. You say, basa, you're a girl. That, um, wit, <laughs> all right, basa, it is a custom to say that thing. Okay, let, let's do it this way. The quai known est is feminine, right? Quai is feminine, so it describes basa. Basa, what she is not, she is awesome to, uh, oh, <laughs> she is accustomed to say that. Okay, Ugh, tongue tied. So basa, who she is not, she's accustomed to say that. Or to take a different word order, basa is accustomed to say that, and we might say, um, which she is not, just to make it make a little more sense in English. Okay, Hulk audience, hearing this, Eru basket Paula, Paula <laughs> blushes. Now, Cornelius had said, this is not about you, it's not against you, right? But of course, she just said that she was Formosa, and she just said that she was a Puella. And this poem is saying that this other person always says that she is a she is Formosa, beautiful, and a Puella, a young woman, and she's saying what she's not, right? So it's implying in the context that maybe Paolo was doing the same. I don't know if Cornelius intended that. Maybe he's he, maybe he does. Maybe he's trying to be mean to her. Atque ketari kamuiwai risum weeks tenant, and the rest of the guests scarcely hold back their laughter. Cornelius vero prudenter, but Cornelius prudently, wisely. Non omnia inquitio cosa sunt carmen of martialis. Not all of the poems of Marshall are humorous. Ecce duo versus, look to verses, de fato viri pauperis, about the fate, the death of a poor man. Et quator in geliam, and four against gelia, Quae coram testibus lacrimas effundit, who, in the sight of or in front of witnesses, lacrimas effundit, pours out tears, super patra mortem, uh, on behalf of her dead father. Okay, here we go. First poem, this is the one about the death of the poor man. Simper pauperis, si pauperis aemiliane. You will always be a poor man. If you are poor, Aemilianus, uh, dantur opes nullis nunc nisi divitibus. Riches are given, or resources are given, riches sounds good here, to no one now except to the wealthy. Ooh, that's a problem we still have. Okay. A misum non flet cum sola cum solas gelia patrem. Um, gelia, when she is alone, does not cry for her lost father. Notice how misum goes with patrem. Si quis ad est, if anyone is there, is present, iusai prosiliunt lacrimae. Ordered tears, or tears on bidding, leap forth. Okay, so these are obviously fake tears. As long as there's somebody around to watch her, she cries for her dead father. When she's alone, she doesn't cry. Non luget quis quis laudare gelia quaerit. Um, whoever seeks to be praised, Gelia, is not mourning, is not grieving. Ile doet viere qui sine teste dolet. That one grieves truly, let where who grieves without a witness. So he's roasting Gelia and saying she's not really sad about her dad. Maybe she's happy because maybe she got his inheritance money or whatever. Maybe she didn't care for him at all. Cantum ferig epigrammatis recitatis, with about a hundred epigrams having been read, 
Cornelius cum hoc finim facit recitandi. Cornelius makes an end uh, of reciting with this. All right, so this is his last poem. Cui legisse satis non est epigrammata centum, nil illi satis est caediciane mali. For whom it's not enough, known as satis, to have read, legisse, a hundred epigrams, nothing is enough, satis est, for that person, caecidianus, of evil. So nothing is enough of evil, nothing is enough of badness for that guy. So the point is, dude, Marshall says, I wrote you a hundred poems. If you can't be satisfied after that, curse you to the ends of times. Nothing's enough of evil for you. Ridint omnes, they all laugh, et Cornelio valde, um, and to Cornelius, valde et diu plaudunt, or for Cornelius, they applaud, they clap very much, and for a long time. All right, well, that concludes chapter 34. I hope you learned a few things here and got a taste for some of our poets. So our, we had Catullus, Ovid, and Marshall. Valete omnes.